Um, so tell us a little bit why this uh, data equality is so important to you and other tech firms. Well, so our, our customers are tiny businesses. So most of our customers, 17 million globally, are solopreneurs. They have less than five employees. They don't have the advantages that large companies do. And one of the great things about the internet, it's been the democratizer of commerce, the democratizer of business, where a small business can look giant even though they're two people. If you start disadvantaging those small businesses through the internet, which has been the giant equalizer, we're changing the economy dramatically for the negative. So those small businesses that have been relying on the internet for their success can't be as reliant as they were or they're going to be disadvantaged. The FCC, though, says that this unfairly burdens the Internet service providers, that they wouldn't go about just slowing down websites, blocking websites. Uh, wouldn't this be a, a preemptive move? And isn't that a problem? No, I mean, I think there's a couple of different ways you can look at it. Certainly the way that you just espoused it, well, nobody would do something nefarious like that. <laughs> you know, when economics get in the way of, of really pragmatic decision-making because you know that your earnings are going to be better or your top line is going to be driven higher, if you change the way that you charge large customers versus small customers, you, you might do the wrong thing. So I think, you know, Taking the approach that Wheeler took with net neutrality, saying, look, everybody ha ought to have equal access to, to the same Internet globally, I think that's the right way to go. And making sure that you don't get government in the middle of it trying to police fast lanes and slow lanes. The last time we had a similar environment was from the Stop Online Piracy Act in 2012. And GoDaddy took a different approach, had to retract, it was boycotted. What has changed since then? Well, the, uh, the entire leadership team, uh, for starters. So that happened, and that was the SOPA uh, uh, thing that you're talking about there. Uh, that happened, you know, in 20, what, 2011, 2010. Uh, it was just the wrong thing to do. And I think they, the leadership at that time just got it wrong. Retracted, said, oh, you know, we made a horrible mistake. Let's change that. And frankly, I've been somebody who's been for open Internet, get government out of it as much as possible so you let free markets and let businesses rule. You've brought so many changes to GoDaddy, including changing GoDaddy's image. I mean, you guys were known very well for these uh, very uh, controversial Super Bowl ads. You've just scrapped that. Uh, yeah. You're trying to increase the number of women in, in tech positions. Right. How difficult has it been to change culture in GoDaddy? You know, it's been, it's been pretty easy. In fact, the... <laughs> The culture and the people that I found in the company were very, very different than the way we were projecting ourselves in public markets. So if you, as you referred to them, the Super Bowl commercials that were very provocative, the folks in, inside the company, they care about their customers. They're talking to them every day. They're fighting the good fight. And we know that 58% in the U.S., 58% of small businesses are run by women. Shouldn't we be showing them... Uh, as business people that are working really hard and trying to be successful. So we, we changed that up about four and a half years ago, started showing women as you know, entrepreneurs that are fighting the good fight. Uh, and frankly, that reflected very positively on our employees who said, boy, I'm really proud of that. That feels better. And then, go, go ahead. Are you proud of the United States right now? The Trump administration restricting visas and, and travel know, bans. What's Silicon Valley going to look like well, in a few years? Look, I'm, yeah, I'm proud of the United States. I was born in America. I think it's a, a great country. Uh, however, we've taken some steps, I think, that are, that are a little backwards, frankly. And there was just another step, I think, in something we call the entrepreneurial visa that allows entrepreneurs to come into the country, start their business, get fired up and get the, take advantage of some of the talent that we have in the States and the venture capital we have in the States to get going. Uh, and we just had an executive order that sort of closed that down. H-1B visas, actually, I think the administration is going in the right direction to make sure that H-1Bs are not abused and they're used by companies who really want to hire great folks mm -hmm. from outside the country to fill the half a million computer science jobs that can't be filled in the States and to be able to go to India, to be able to go to China, to be able to go to Eastern Europe and bring in PhD, machine learning, AI, big data talent that we're having trouble finding in the States today. We educate the people in the States. Right. They come into our college system, end of their student visa, we send <laughs> them home, and then we make it really difficult to come back.